Before we begin, I have two pieces of advice. Uh, one from our, which I received from a close friend, and the other from a very precious teacher, uh, who you will be listening to uh, later. So one of them is do magic trick, and the other is don't fart too loud on the stage. Well, well, unfortunately, I will only be able to carry out one of these advices. So, uh, hello. Um, today, uh, I will talk about everything. I will talk about everything around you, everything you ever used, uh, everything you ever produced, and how those things have existed all the time to serve only one purpose. And also, I will be talking about, I guess, cyborgs and bionic humans, uh, gigantic memory clouds, synthetic organs, and prosthetic limbs, which are basically, I guess, the feature of everything around you. So now, as much as I know, there is this one truth, uh, one truth that everyone in this room are more than afraid to admit, not just you or I, uh, all of us, and daringly every single human being that ever existed uh, or walked on our planet Earth. And that's death. Okay. So, um, death, the literal deadlines of our lives, it's the end. It's possibly when the clock stops working. Um, it is when things go by to a limit, when you can't control them, and you don't exist in this earth anymore. Now, for centuries, we were thought uh, that there was nothing you could do to prevent it from happening. Be seven or 70, that will always find you. Uh, and brings you to where you came from. Now, um, this given statement that death is something that we have never achieved to control, I believe is one of the most hypocritical lies uh, humanity has been telling itself since the beginning. Um, or to put it, um, I mean, this is so wrong and actually so annoying that it has become one of the most common themes of TV shows all around the world. Now, um, death, now here's why. Death, humanity should be the last one to say that death is inevitable because it has been basically doing everything it can just to prevent it from happening. Or to, let's put it simpler, everything we have done ever has got to do with death and preventing it from coming. And actually, we've been uh, successful so far at doing it. Now, um, imagine... A few centuries ago, a few centuries ago, there were thousands of things that could kill you. Uh, you could leave your home in a time of peace, whereas when you came back home, your country would be in war with another. You would be called to army, and you had a chance of being killed within minutes of joining. Uh, if you actually survived the war, then you would catch a disease in the market from an Arabian trader, and you would die in 45 degree seat the other day. Uh, if you actually did survive that disease as well, a famine would hit your city so hard that even ha if you had water and food, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't dare to go outside because of the smell, the rotting corpses made on the streets. Now, think about it. Most people at those times went on to live 40 years at most. And those who lived to their 50s were considered gifted. Now, okay, there were some people who lived to their 60s, 70s, and even 80s, but they were so rare that the Catholic Church actually canonized some of these people. Now, um, how about, let me give you an example about medicine. Uh, in the 16th century and also the previous centuries, doctors thought sicknesses and illnesses were caused by bad smell, which carried pestilence all around the country. Now, and they treated uh, symptoms like headache uh, through smelling uh, sweet things like rose and lavender and uh, ear aches through putting roasted onion in your ear and stomach aches through consumption of mints, uh, balms and warm it. Now, uh, when comparing these to what opportunities we have in medicine today, uh, these are just an example of how our survival, our desire to, be li to, to live more, has fueled our developments in most of the sectors. Now, like, imagine just what we did. Uh, and let's not forget our other desire, which is to be able to do more in a given time period. Now, if, an example for that would be clothes. In ancient times, our ancestors 
hunted down animals, skinned them, and gave it such a shape that it would fit human body and, and protected from environmental factors, protected uh, both day and night, which gave them a better capability to hunt, produce, and even in some cases reproduce, uh, because as people started wearing clothes, they started it being, uh, appearing more attractive to each other, and the desire for reproduction actually increased. Now, um, this is not uh, talked as much as the discovery of fire, but the invention of clothes has been one of the most revolutionizing uh, findings of our kind's history. Now, okay, when I say everything, everything we have ever done has to do with death, the question emerges, like, how about, you say, like, things that really don't have much to do with mm, death, how about entertainment, you say? I mean, how does entertainment relate to the development of our species? But here it is. Without entertainment, how would our creativity exist, or could it exist? Without entertainment, how could we invent new things? How could we uh, find inspiration in other ideas? Without something to look at, something to cry at, how could we look at things and perceive them in such a manner that we would be able to convey them to other generations and each other? So, and also entertainment is uh, like a, f like, probably a ventilator to all humankind. I mean, uh, humans are not emotionally immune, they are fragile. And like, like me right now, I am pretty stressed. And when stress amounts so much, uh, humans become basically useless piles of flesh and bone. So now, uh, I hope that having heard this much argument, I wish to let you think about it for a while. Think about how you came here. Think about how you woke up. Uh, think about your soft, relaxing bed, uh, think about your kitchen, the, the tools inside your kitchen. Um, think about your door, your car, your keys, uh, the seats of your car, the road, traffic lights, traffic signs, uh, paths and pavements. Uh, think about this auditorium, its design. Everything in your life has to do with death. And everything is there for a reason that is to make your life more livable so that you won't get distracted by everyday normalities and you would be able to put your focus on creating and producing. Now, okay, uh, I hope that we have reached a consensus. Let's, I want to go to back to death. Um, now, I, I think that some of you may be thinking, this is kind of unrelated. Like, what we have talked in the past few minutes, it seems a rather bit unrelated to death when you look from some, uh, some perspectives. Here's a piece of resistance. Um, Humanity has been so successful at telling itself that death is not a daily part of our lives that we think that we don't really work to solve it so much. We don't think we do things about death so much. Now, that's the lie. Um, death, uh, everything we do has to do with death. And, and everything, and I just cannot emphasize this anymore. Um, the humankind's biggest obsession at the end is its end. Now, and it's been like that throughout history. Uh, it's been like that through our entire past. Uh, this desire to be able to do more and live more has shaped our entire past and history, our development uh, in all aspects of life. Now, don't you think it would be a little stupid to think uh, that this desire won't also be shaping our future as well. Now, before we move on to uh, the future uh, and how it will continue to shape our future, I wish to clarify something that may be boggling your mind. Uh, you think to yourselves, how does uh, clothes, uh, how does my car, how does my bed solve death? Okay, so maybe in some cases um, it may be postponing death. Uh, but death comes anyway, we die someday, at, as we die someday, whatever we do. Now here's what I believe, uh, the belief has been plaguing innocent minds. Now, the belief that death is an entity on its own, uh, that death is something or even a thing, this is where science comes in. People don't just die of old age. Uh, or, and people just don't die of anything. People die of something. Uh, people die of heart attack, people die of brain hemorrhage, people die of multiple organ failure. 
Uh, do people die of old age? Of course not. I mean, old age is not a concept. It's not a disease. Um, death is, at the end, is not a concept. It's just a cessation of biological functions in your body. It's, death is not when the clock stops working, it's when your heart stops pumping. Uh, when you die, a hooded creature does not come and knock on your door. When you die, you just don't exist anymore in this earth. Now, the, what this proves is that death is not a date but an event. Uh, and, okay, we can't postpone an event if you're not the creator. Uh, but remember, we can cancel an event if we try so hard. Now, we, and so far we have been actually good at canceling events, canceling death in some aspects of our lives. But we have been doing it one by one. We have been uh, treating symptoms and diseases one by one. Um, things happened uh, and medicine have sold single diseases and symptoms and attacked each of them. And in some cases, like antibiotics, uh, they prevented diseases and illnesses caused by specific organisms. Now, um, and, and it doesn't seem that we are going to find the ultimate cure anytime soon, the cure to everything. Uh, whenever we solve something, the problem, a problem will always pop up. Uh, now, I wish to go back, uh, ref refer back to this obsession this all-time normality of our kind. Now, think about this creature, this creature burning with ambition. Uh, th when it finds out that, it, that anything it has done so far didn't cancel the eventual death, can you just imagine what would happen in such a case when this creature finds out this? There, there would be craze. People would go crazy. Now, I, I wish to hypo hypothesize uh, what would happen in such a case. So, um, how about billionaires would open independent laboratories uh, on their own with the only purpose of beating death? Uh, well, that happens, that seems to be happening. Uh, people would do whatever they can to stop their bodily functions. Um, okay, great. Great. Okay, so billionaires uh, would open independent laboratories with the only cause of beating death. Okay, that seems to be happening. People would do whatever they can to stop their bodily functions and wait until a solution emerges. Great. And parliaments and governments would all heated the debates on whether to fund such researches and establish its own laboratory. Um, Russia would accuse the United States of interfering with their researches, while the United States would accuse Russian scientists of doing illegal experiments. Uh, there would be websites promising millionaires that if they paid a thousand bucks, their new body would be in, uh, ready for in a few decades. That's a real website, by the way, you can check it out. And also, there, there would be people protesting for longevity. Yeah, that's real. Um, so, in the first, as we go towards the first quarter, the end of the first quarter of the 21st century, the medicorporate sector sits down. It thinks to itself, okay, so what we have founded, uh, what we founded medicine was to solve death, uh, to prevent people from dying, but we haven't achieved that. So they think uh, to themselves and they draw inspiration from two current ma major medical realities, one of them being prosthetic limbs and the other being synthetic organs. Now, uh, these co share a common theme which is replacement. Now, they think to themselves, okay, how about replacing things uh, how about replacing things that are broken uh, with, with another thing that's perfectly healthy rather than trying to solve each symptom and disease one by one? And it seems perfectly logical to all of them. And it seems, and I guess it seems logical to most of you too. I mean, is it, it, I mean it seems perfectly okay for me to take out a heart which is broken and uh, plagued by heart diseases and replace it with a blood purifying machine which is to be maintained just a few times in a year. Now, um, as these ideas spread, an ideology is born out of thin air, transhumanism. Now, uh, transhumanism is the desire to live more in an aspect of future. Transhumanism advocates the continuous survival of human race to whatever means possible, whatever. And actually, they propose three different ways. First of them is replacement. Replacing uh, limbs, for example, legs, replacing arms, uh, replacing organs. And the second one, and, and they say that's what we will be dealing with in the, 
in probably the following 50, 40 to 50 years. And then they say bodies will come, full bodies in which our brain will be transplanted into. And they say that that's going to happen in the next uh, 300 years so, or so. And then they say there will be gigantic clouds. There will be gigantic clouds of information, every mind interconnected to each other through a global network. Um, and then they say that's what, that's, that's what needs to happen for the continuous survival of the human race to be ensured. Now, um, for centuries, the belief um, that the human body and that the belief that considered human body and mind sacred uh, has been predominant. Um, they, people have believed that human is something that is so perfect, that is superior to all other living creatures on earth. Now, as, as ideologies like transhumanism gets more popular, um, we will take a part of this equation out of it. We will take out human body. We will see human body as just a mortal shell that holds us back. And, and as, as we take out human body out of the equation, our very definition of human will also change. And remember, we won't stop. We won't stop because we never stop. Uh, we just go on. We have a desire to be able to live more and do more. Now, and someday brains will also let us down. And we'll try to fix it. And who knows how? Who knows how we'll fix minds? And then we'll continue on replacing aspects of our lives. And we will we'll never stop replacing because our entire existence is based upon it. Our entire existence is based upon this battle to death. Now, when we're doing this battle, we don't care about people shouting, this is abnormal, this is not normal. You shouldn't be doing this because we know it deep inside. We know it deep inside that we burn. We burn with the desire to go beyond. Now, I wish to finish off uh, with a very interesting anecdote from ancient Greece. There was this king named Theseus. This Theseus was such a great king that his people wanted to m commemorate him somehow, and they saved his ship in the harbor. They saved this ship in harbor for 300 years. Well, over time, the planks of this ship started rotting away. As planks started rotting away, people started replacing these planks with other planks, sometimes of same material, and as we moved on, a bit more advanced material. And this kept on going. Plants rotted and we replaced them. We continued on replacing them. And at the end, someone realized, is this Theseus' ship anymore? As we replace every aspect, will we be normal anymore? Thank you.